Number 13 then from the 2015 Advanced Higher Maths. Here we go, a complex number question. You've got an equation involving complex numbers. The first part says solve this equation for three marks. And it says by writing z in the form of x plus i y, which you would have done anyway. So just put a note of that. z equals x plus i y. And the other thing, of course, is the modulus of a complex number is given by the square root of these two components squared, x squared plus y squared. Right, ready to feed that in. So if z is this, then you've got x plus i y squared would be squaring that would just give you x squared plus y squared minus 4. Not sure exactly where the first mark goes because the marking scheme says writing in the form x plus i y, well, you were told to anyway, and either the left hand side or the right hand side correct. Presumably it means once you've multiplied out a bit more because it seems to be level with the next line. So multiplying this side out, x squared plus twice the product, 2xy, I think I'll put the i at the end, but i squared is negative 1, so it'll be minus y squared equals, now I can remove those little courtesy brackets and say this, and that's definitely the first mark. Now, gather it over, get the x's and y's here, and numbers over here. So what have we got? Well, these x's are going to cancel out, they didn't last long. So we've got negative 2y squared, as being the only real parts left on this side, and the other part would be the plus 2xyi. And on this side, all we've got is negative 4. So now you can equate the real with the real, and the imaginary with the imaginary. So equating the real parts, we've got negative 2y squared is negative 4. I can we'll carry on with that. So y squared then is equal to 2, so y is going to be plus or minus root 2. Now, equating the real and imaginary parts and getting down to this was the second mark. I haven't put the imaginary part down yet, though. The imaginary part would be, well, this part should equal 0. So a bit of a dilemma. Will I just put the 2xy equals 0, or will I put that times i equals 0? It doesn't really matter because the whole thing comes to 0. The next mark is for finding x, and that's where you need this answer. If that product comes to zero, and you know that y is equal to plus or minus root 2, the important thing with y being equal to plus or minus root 2 is that y isn't equal to zero. So, if that product equals zero, and y isn't equal to zero, the only thing that's left there that could be zero is x. So there you go, x must be zero. And that was the third mark. Now it doesn't give the final a mark for the final answer, but we might as well put it down. So what was z after all? It was x plus i y. Well, x was 0, and y is plus or minus root 2i. So the two answers are z equals root 2i, or z, maybe we'll separate them, z2 equals negative root 2i. Part B. Find the solutions to this equation for four marks. Now, the first thing you should notice really is that's just the same as part A, set with the addition of this multiplying i. And then remembering that when you multiply complex numbers, you add their arguments. Multiplying by i has the effect of turning something through 90 degrees. Which means if you're taking a square root, remembering De Mauvres, if you square it, it'll be double the angle. If you take the square root, it'll be half the angle. If you take the square root, this should have the effect of turning this, which are those answers, this is the previous set of answers, through just 45 degrees. So it would seem that if you take these two answers, root 2, that's on the imaginary axis, that's root 2i, and negative root 2, negative root 2i, then turning it, multiplying it by, again, the square root, should turn that through 45 degrees to here. So that's still root 2 which makes that half a square, so that'd be one back, one up. Turning that through 45 degrees. So again, leave that as root two, make that half a square, one, a negative one. So that would suggest the two answers to this are going to be z1 equals, take this one, one minus i, and z2 would be negative one plus i. 
However, you can't just go on intuition. You have to demonstrate it. So what would the de demonstration be? Well, there was the original equation which said z squared is equal to this. And if z is equal to that, that means z squared would be 2 times negative 1 when you square it is negative 2. So that if you multiply that by i to get this new equation, that new equation should simply say you've got i times, and that was z squared, which is negative 2, negative 2i, and that's what you have to solve. Hey, right. do that the polar way. So what is that in polar form? Where is that negative 2i? It's down here. So I'll just take the absolute argument here, which is negative 90. It's degrees, but I'm not going to put the wee degree signs in. Maybe I should, but I'm more. So, what's that in polar form? That'll be 2, and then it'll be cos negative 90 plus i sine negative 90, but I'm just going to write cis of negative 90. And as a wee disclaimer, I might just put cis of whatever is cos theta plus i sine theta, just so I don't have to keep writing that out over and over again. But more than that, because I'm going to operate on it, I'll then put in the general argument, which is, it's that plus how many turns you like, plus n lots of 360. So when you do the square root of that then, I'll have the square root of 2 and cis, and if this is the square root of this, it'll be half of those, so it'll be minus 45 plus n lots of 180. Maybe I'll put all the wee degree signs in after all. And there's only going to be two cases. If n is 0, I'll get z1, and that'll be root 2 cis, and that'll just be because that's 0 of negative 45 degrees. And if n is 1, z2 will be root 2 cis of negative 45 plus 180, which is 135 degrees. And if n is 2, it just takes you back to that one again. Then spelling it out you'll have this. Z1 will be root 2 times, now I'll need the bits multiplied out. Cos negative 45 is the same as cos 45, which is 1 upon root 2, plus i sine, I'll put the plus down first, sine of negative 45 is the negative of 1 upon root 2, so that is in fact minus 1 upon root 2i. So that then just gives me 1 minus i. There we go. Z2 well, that will be root 2 times. This time it's cos of 135. 135 puts into the second quadrant. So that will be a negative cos 45. Negative 1 upon root 2. Plus sine of 135 puts into the second quadrant where it's positive. So sine 45 is plus 1 upon root 2i. Multiply it out. Negative 1 plus i. So there you are. There's the solution to this, the de Mauvre, the polar form way. Not sure where the marks would be allocated because it's not mentioned in the marking scheme. However, the method that you'll see if you look at the marking scheme simply ignores the fact that there must be a connection there and just starts from scratch again. Right, starting from scratch then, that would still be the same as before, so that would be x squared plus, and I'll put this 2xyi at the front, minus y squared would be i times, and that was just that, x squared plus y squared minus 4. Now that was the first mark for that correct expansion in x and y. Now we just to gather it again. So what have we got for the real parts? We've got an x squared, but we've got a y squared, and there's nothing here. They're all imaginary. So I've got x squared minus y squared. I'll just give them a wee bracket, keep them safe from these imaginary parts. And for the imaginary parts, I've got, they're going to come over as negatives, but you can see a pattern already, x squared, y squared, 2xy, I'll put that first. So minus x squared i, I know it could be i x squared, but I like having that at the front, plus 2xyi minus y squared i leaves negative 4i. Just writing them consistent with this. You would write 4i, you would never write i4. So since these are unknown numbers, I'm having them at the front the same as that. And taking that negative out from those, I can write the next line as x squared minus y squared. Then for this part, it would be minus. And of course, those turn into x plus y. No, they don't. They turn into x minus y squared i equals negative 4i. 
Now it's separating out the real and the imaginary part. The real with the real, of which there's none, and the imaginary with the imaginary. Well, we've got this. Real parts. Well, x squared minus y squared equals zero. Might as well continue with that. So y squared equals x squared. That doesn't mean y equals x, so y would be plus or minus x. Imaginary parts. Just put imagine. Imaginary parts would be, I've got the negative already, I've got the i already, so it's just this part. x minus y squared equals 4. Now there's a mark just for that initial equating the real and the imaginary parts. And the next mark's for getting these two equations. I've got one already here, but this one's then going to say x minus y equals plus or minus 2. Now we've got this pair of simultaneous equations, I'll give them names, I'll call that 1, I'll call that 2. And then there's a case of how do you now solve this pair when you've got the pluses and minuses, there seems a little bit of jiggery-pokery there. Well, the best thing to do is just try the two different cases. Let's try the case of case. y equals x. Now you could substitute that into this, this one here, and see what happens. If you were to substitute that into this, you'd have, if you put that in number 2, you'd have x minus y, which is x, is plus or minus 2. But that would say 0 equals plus or minus 2, which is obviously false, which means y must equal negative x. So now we'll do that. y equals negative x in 2 gives this. x minus negative x equals plus or minus 2, which means you've got there... 2x equals plus or minus 2, so x equals plus or minus 1. And since y is equal to the negative x, that means the corresponding y's will be y equals minus or plus 1. Not got the mark yet? You'll get the mark when you finally write down the solutions. So the two solutions would be, taking the tops first of all, remember x is the real, y is the imaginary. That says we've got 1 minus i and the bottom line says you've got negative 1, but plus i. As before, either intuitively or by operating square roots on the Argand diagram. And that's the final mark.